today, let's be real with me, Ben Hatchett. I'm at Manor Grove in absolute middle of nowhere, somewhere in Essex, I think. I'm here to meet Daniel Westbrook. Again, we've both been on the James English podcast. So obviously we're gonna go for a bit of a catch up, talk about our journeys, what's been happening since. I hope you have a great chat and get more in depth about things. So let's do this. Not even as a kid, not even going to schools or no, nothing. No, I got bullied really bad at school. Yeah. So I'm really fearful around violence, really yeah. bad. That was me, obviously. No one realised that because obviously my reputation from prison. Yeah, but you're a guy as well. You come out fighting with a girl. Yeah. I think, it, especially where most of my, I got that stuck in my earring, where most of my abusing was done by men. For me, it's like it makes me fearful. Anything like that makes me completely yeah. fearful. But yeah, no, it does make me fearful. Yeah, I was obviously, when I had a difficult time going nuts, see, obviously, and then... You in the care started, system? When I started, yeah, I come from the care system and all that, and then I had a difficult time at school, I never, like, fitted in. So for me, like, then when I got into violence, I went opposite, I got, like, into violence. So. To save yourself? Yeah, kind of, but then I, I got... To find a job, it's, to it, it, well. it, yeah, but that's what I mean, you have addictive personality, and I yeah. think that's why later on in life, when you find recovery one way or another, Yeah. Like when you get reformed, or like especially being put in a system yeah. for you. Um, same with me being put in EastEnders, it's like being reformed. Because yeah. you have to follow suit. Um, for me, it's like I needed some form of stability, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't fit in anywhere. Yeah. So I sort of just went with the people that were drinking, using, like you went with the people with violence, yeah. just to find my niche to fit in. And it, and it helped me block out anything that was painful for me. Yeah. Like for you, Aggression, not aggression, but it like was, it was aggressive, fighting violence, and aggressive. The drinking, it was all is a form of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any a first form of defence is attack. Yeah. Whereas for me, for me, it, for some people fearful, I just numb myself. That's a form of numbing myself. Whereas if you it's adrenaline, yeah. it's the same thing. But it all, it all comes from trauma. It all based back from trauma. I'm just doing a, a counselling course on it, all, and it just it does all come from trauma based behaviour. Mm. But yeah, so for me, I love watching the boxing and UFC and all that sort of stuff. I love all that. I'm such a geese bird. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's I don't like to see people I love fight. Yeah. I don't mind in a boxing ring, but I don't like the thought of people fighting. Like, if I hear somebody that's their kid's been stabbed or something, I see something on the telly, I really, my heart is heavy for him. Yeah. But I do know it is the way of the world right now. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why, that's why I'm behind this. Obviously, my story is redemption now, and that's why I'm trying to make it different. You're still young enough as well to make a difference, and you're still young I enough to go out there and do public speaking and for kids to look at you and think you're not that far off their age. Mm. You're not being, I don't mean that in a disrespectful no, sense, no, like, no, I mean, no, a way no. that you can speak their, the way they speak, you yeah. understand where they're coming from, you've been through the system. Do you know what I mean? And in the big secondary schools and stuff, there's kids out there that just don't fit in and they're one kid that'll walk in there one day and just shoot a classroom dead. Well, I, lived, I lived in Los Angeles yeah. for years and um, you know it hasn't always got to be the kid that's a street kid out there selling weed and, and shot in it could be the really quiet nerdy kid that yeah. comes in one day and just attacks a glass yeah. so if you went in and spoke to kids in schools you could reach so many people like doing this podcast is although you help letting others tell their story mm. all the time it's healing you as well of course like, I'm finding my things like when this Amazon when the, the Amazon finishes that's why I want to start the YouTube now you know James and said one it's all business but you know I want to separate it because I've enjoyed doing it since I've come out I found like, like building a platform the message I get you must get it as well like when people call me yeah. an inspiration it's like the fuck I'm just yeah, an extra you kid comfort nah, you need to stuff. nurture that and you need to yeah. say do you know what you need to take that yeah because like we're really good at going no 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 that's not me I'm a horrible person, I've done horrible things. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And all the time we keep feeding negativity into ourselves. Mm. And like, I'm really big about, I do a lot of public speaking for Law of Attraction and yeah, The really Secret and the people like that. I work with those guys and for us, it's like they've taught me, they've retrained my brain into the same way. Someone says it's an inspiration, it's a story. It's to take that on board and not in a big headed way, but in a humble way of going, yeah, you've come a long way, keep going, keep going, keep going. Not you're a piece of shit, you've mm. done this, you've made your children ashamed, you're a drug addict, you've done this, look what you've done to yourself, look how you look. Same as with you, you've got to take it on board. Mm. And that's one of the first conversations I had with you, and I said, I like 
when I eventually watched your podcast and eventually, stuff. Eventually, eventually watch. Like, just getting it on straight, innit? Right? Like, you say, yeah, I'll watch it. I was like, oh, I'll watch yours, innit? But then she turned around the other and I was like, oh, I'll finally watch it. I thought, well, you already watched I it. Watched <laughs> it. I did, did, did. I fell asleep. I'm old, right? So when I watched it, I was like, do you know what? You're incredibly humble for what you've gone through. And I think, I think because you've got nothing to wear, what, you know, the most powerful man in the world is a man with nothing left to lose. Mm. He's also the most dangerous man in the world. And you've come out on the top side rather than the dangerous side because you've come out to help others. You're very selfless and I like that. It's nice. This was one of the reasons I agreed to do your podcast. Man, I'm grateful for doing it. You know, you don't have to, isn't it? It's, it's, I appreciate it, isn't it? It's cool. So welcome to Let's Be Real with Ben Hatchett. Today, an absolute special guest and now a good friend of mine, Danielle Westbrook. Thank you for having me. Uh, Christmas special too. Thank you for doing this for me. No, listen, I wanted to do it for you. I'm, I was excited actually to come and sit and talk to you because obviously I've followed your story. I've got, I saw you on James English. I've seen you do a few other things. Um, and I've seen how real you are. And I've also seen how humble you are considering what you've been through. Um, so yeah, I was excited to come and, and, and help you launch your podcast and do your thing. And it's, I think it's exciting. I'm excited to see your journey. No, thank you. It's much appreciated. Like, the thing with me, Danny, is all like, you know, I'm not trying to glamorise anything of the things that I've done and that. Like, what I'm trying to focus more on, like, you know, I could sit and talk war stories and talk, glamorise all the Real negative good. shit. Exactly, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to, like, you know, what a lot of people, I read through the comments of the James English podcast with you and myself, a lot of people took inspiration from our stories. So that's why, you know, me launching this now, like, doing interviews now with people, I want people to be able to watch something and see something that they can relate to and, and gain something from that. Exactly. But yeah. and also see what I think is with me, with, with what I'm doing with my stuff, it's like, I don't know about you, but I used to spend a lot of time and people used to go, oh, yeah, it's a real inspiration. I used to feel it almost made me cringe mm. inside because I thought, oh, how can people say that about me when I've done so many bad things that I'm so ashamed of? My shame. Like, I carry like a whole Louis Beloved set of like shame around with me and guilt and I've learned through as we'll talk about the law of attraction and stuff and like mm. and, and doing stuff that way and through just manifesting good things and, and not putting that horribleness on me because when I start wearing when I pick up that coat of armour and I put it on that shame I sort of I project that and it's a very fine line of, of being flash when people say to you like oh you're an inspiration this that and the other being flash with it and being ashamed mm. there's the two it's to find meeting in the middle and it's just like the way I think the finding the happy medium and the balance is exactly what you're doing is like it's giving something back because it's keeping you level because mm. it could be really easy for you to, to come out you're only a little while out from being behind the door Four for months. such a long time yeah Four you look well on it you haven't, <laughs> you haven't got that white pasty like prison town or anything <laughs> easy, but, um, town. easy town yeah but like Sponsor. you know for me it's it, it could be very easy for you to slip back into old ways because it's familiar it's what we know and like sometimes it's a scary world out there mm. especially when you come out it's like almost like in a different sense coming back from rehab doing six months in rehab and coming out the other side it's like it's like baby steps first of all and everything's new and everything's a little bit scary because you've been institutionalised and you have been for so long it's like coming out the other side of it it's like do I go back to what I know because it's safe because I know I can do prison mm. or do I just make a difference and change and, and, and be the man that I was meant to be and I think that's what you're doing with this and that's why I was inspired to, to come on and speak to you really no, and it's much appreciated it really is uh, we were speaking earlier like, look for me, obviously, what, what keeps me sort of focused, what keeps me grounded now, what keeps me sort of like, level. chasing everything, yeah, level and keep me sort of like chasing is the law of attraction. And we, we was having a little chat outside before we started, talking about right. law of attraction. And the amount of people that I'm meeting now that actually sort of like believe in law of attraction is, is crazy. Do you know what? I think this whole pandemic has changed people's view on life. Yeah. Because I think it's given them something more to focus on the work and, and, and stunting a life. It's what what my son would call stunting a life, like an Instagram life. Yeah. People have had to reel up to stuff. They've had to sit with themselves for a little while. They've had to like isolate, they've had to do stuff, and they've had to get real. They've had to sit back with their families. It's not all about being flash and doing stuff. It's about being real, and it's about your health, and it's about, it's about doing life, and it's about doing good for others, mm. taking care of each other, and that's what we should be doing. Mm. And you know, it's, and that's hard. It's hard for some people to do because like for me, I didn't know how to take care of myself and I'm a grown ass woman, but still it took me to 47. I'd say it took me, even through when I was 14 years clean, 
I still didn't really know how to take care of myself. Yeah, I knew how to wash and do all that, but I didn't know how to love myself. Mm. I didn't know how to like myself. And that's what, it's it's getting down to the real, the real crux of it. And that's Mm. what keeps me grounded, keeps my feet on the floor every day. It's just like having a plan, having a focus. What am I doing today? What is my plan today? What's my week? Mm. Do you know what I mean? I have like a 12 month plan, a six month, because I'm one of them people, if I have a 12 month plan, if I haven't done that in three days, (laughs) I'm bored of it. So I have to have a 12 month, a six month, a three month, a six week and a daily. So, you know, and I have a bucket list of things I have to do and things I want to do. And I think for me, the only thing that's keeping me well is helping other people. And like you're doing now, speaking mm. to other people, doing the podcast thing. And it's like, the whole time I'm doing that, it keeps me well as well. It's like practice what we preach. That's, that's yeah. what I find, like, well, especially working with the kids with the knives and, you know, I'm out there trying to, like, deliver this message. And, and that's right. Yeah. And it's not just knives now, it's done crime, it's, you know, it's post code wars, it's yeah. everything, it's just what hope is there in this country mm. and it's a scary time, like everything's folding, this, this mm. pandemic's taking the whole world yeah. down and, and it is like, it, it's almost like brother against brother in some ways. And I think what you're doing is really important because there is a lot to learn and even someone my age can learn a lot from listening to you, you know. No, thank you. Well, that's it. I just feel like with everything I'm trying to do, it's like, you know, like the ripple effect. It's exactly. like, that. that's what it is. And even right now, like you coming in, you know, supporting me, we don't know who's going to see this. We don't know what someone would take from this. So if it's positive and inspired to go and do something like... One person gets something from it. Yeah. And goes and gets help, whether that's about abuse, about addiction, about violence, mm. about being, I don't know, groomed into being in part of a gang that they don't want to be in mm. or from my side of it, child abuse or, or drug addiction or, you know, if there's a mum out there or a, or a child out there that's looking and thinking my parents are drug addicts and I'm thinking it's their fault and, and they watch this and they see that it's just, that that's the way, mm. it's about the person, not about the situation, then we've helped somebody. That's it. And that's yeah, what that, it's that, all that's about. That is. That, that's exactly what it is, you know, I've got it towed on my back, redemption, this this is my redemption, I know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fighting, you know, I've seen 2021, I'm, you know, I'm going to be making my debut boxing, that is my redemption. This is your calling more so, I think. Trying to, trying to help people, Daniel, do you, do you get what I'm saying? Like, do you know, know why? Because you didn't get any help yourself for such a long time and you've had to learn. I mean, you would have thought a kid that went away to prison and all the things you've been through mm. would actually write a book. Yeah. Let alone be sat here doing a podcast, talking to people from different walks of yeah. life, getting messages out there, researching people, doing yeah. things. You know, it is such going against the prototype of of what people would expect. And, and that sounds really cliche, but people expect, oh, he's come out of prison, he'll be back inside in the next 100%, six months. A hundred percent. The same as me, oh, she's come out of rehab, I'll watch her, yeah, she's yeah. fucked. That's what people think, yeah, she's fucked. That's and there'll be... PTAW, yeah, you know, prove yeah. them all wrong. You That's see, right. We spoke about it. We it? did, and it's what it's man. all about. That's and it's right. like me, I say... All the time, I've got the same thing. Me and my son have got the same thing. Too. It was family first. And any time I feel weak, that's right there on my arm. Family first, my kids first. Because mm. I put everything in front of it because of what things that have happened to me. And don't get me wrong, I have a whole carousel of things up there in my fucking head, messed up head, that I can pull down any time and use on. Mm. That happened to me. Well, I might as well go out and get pissed and get on it. Yeah. That happened to me. That happened to me. That person's got that job. That person, these tenders aren't taking me back. They're like, I'm going to go out and get on it. Yeah. No, I'm not. Do you know what? If one door closes, if that door, if you knock on a door and it don't open, it's not your door. Mm. Go try another door. That's the way I look at it. I'm like, don't keep trying the same door if it's not opening for you. Go a different way. Like everybody knows you could go back to doing whatever you used to do and a lot worse mm. with the amount of contacts you've probably made and the way you know you can go and do prison. That's easy for you. This is a hard thing for you to no, do. This, this is all new. Because like, it's so new. You know, I used to go in souls and have one-on-ones with people, like all different sizes and all that. You know, I fought killers and all sorts. And but that's that why boxing is easy for And you. I'm getting more nervous coming and starting my own podcast, coming and meeting all these people. Come and talk and to me. Crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean. Me. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying? So it, you know, it's whole it's new, new territory and that's but good. I think, when we're like, I think when we're fully committed to something, I think for me, like, you know, because... You believe in it. The mess- yeah, I do. I know I do. Because, like, some of the messages I got back from people, that was inspired by the story and I read some of the comments of you it's sort of like solidating and so like, I would have been going at it anyway and if it was all negative because you know like saying if we can change one then you're helping dro- somebody exactly. you, do you know what if somebody had reached out to you you might not have done as much time mm. but that was your journey and, yeah. and about being horrible it's like me being abused all my life and trafficked and you know groomed and stuff that was my journey. Mm. And you know what? I don't really, I don't think about that. That was a different mm. life for me today. I'm an adult today and I use that today as like, I'm a survivor, not a victim of certain things that I've done and I hold everything I've done I'm accountable for. It's nobody else's fault but my mm. own. 
other than the abuse side. Um, but Where do you the get the strength side. from? Where do you get the strength from? I, I don't I know. Just you just get up every day and just do through, life. You've been through it. You've been My through kids need me. Do you know what I mean? I'm their yeah. mum. You get one mum, and I'm their mum, and it's like my mum needs me. Do you know what I mean? I never really realised that till this time round. I'm like, do you know what? My mum actually does need me to be a daughter to her. Mm. My mum had to be a mum to my kids because I couldn't. Mm. You know, the last relapse I had, my daughter wouldn't speak to me. She wouldn't live with my mum for five years and that really breaks my heart but today we're close mm. and when I moved back down recently from Liverpool I moved back to my parents and I'm like my dad's got my dementia he's in a home and I live with my mum and stepdad's at the moment but my daughter's there and I'm so blessed and you know my son fought and fought and fought he's never left my side that kid is my best mate in the world but yes. well both my kids are but in different ways but he, he really went you know my mum and that was scared to take me back in because they're scared of getting hurt and they're mm. scared of of the violence and the, not the violence. It's not. I'm not a violent person. We spoke about that as well. But it's like, it's the, it's the switches with me when I'm using. I'm yeah. not a nice person, and they were frightened that I was going to do it. As much as they love me and they want me there, they're fearful. Mm. You know, my mum's nearly seventy years old. Like she didn't want that. And I've come back and I'm really, I'm so grateful today to be a daughter to my mother mm. and a mother to my to my children. Um, do you say grateful, like, the grateful, gratitude? Grateful, the gratitude, the gratitude just, gratitude. I, do you know what, I sit there and I just, I sit there sometimes, I look up on the sofa and I'm like, no, I could cry, because I'm so grateful to just be part of the family again, and I could cry, it makes me, it makes me so I happy, know, I, but, I know, but it's true, because like, yes. when you've, you've put yourself through so much pain with shit, and it's like, for what, for a packet, for what that makes you, for what other people have done to you, and what you do to numb yourself, Make sure it's something that you're not. But I'd, I'd used for so long, throughout my, my teens, early teens and my adulthood, that when I got clean, and I had a 14 year sobriety, when I got clean, I was so scared to get clean. It weren't putting down the coke. It was, I didn't know who I was without it. I didn't know who I was gonna be without it. And that to me is like, that's what I was scared of. Mm. I was scared of who I was gonna be, I was fearful. And fear is, addiction is built on fear. Mm. Yet your ego is what will kill you. You know what I mean? So for me, I had to drop the ego. The ego is what will kill you. So for me, the biggest form of addiction is fame. That I think anybody has in this day and age, whether you're on TOWID, all these TOW, all these, everyone's doing podcasts, and that's not a disrespect to you, but it's like suddenly everybody's wife, sister, dog's brother's cat is doing a podcast or something. You know, everyone's doing something. Mm. Everyone wants their five minutes. Everyone wants to be famous. Everyone wants to stunt the life. So mm. for me, it's like, Fame, 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 everyone wants it. When they get it, they don't know what to do with it. Mm. Then come the other problems. So like you've got the Love Island people, stuff, stuff like that, which is great. But then when the next season comes around and it's somebody else that's famous and then people aren't so well famous anymore, mm. do you know what I mean? And their Instagram page is going low and stuff, you're not hot anymore. Love. Then the mental health kicks in mm. with stuff because these companies and these TV companies use and if you like, and I will say it, I blatantly will say it, I've got nothing to lose with it, because I am honest about it. They abuse you. It's a form of abuse. Because as long as their viewing figures are here, mm. they don't they really care which, them, which, which cow with an umber stumps on its ass they're going to use to get it there. Mm. They don't care if that person six months down the line sitting there in hospital with tubes coming out from where they're trying mm. to OD. Do you know what I mean? But that's mm. somebody's son, daughter, mum, brother, sister, auntie, whatever. Mm. And for me, I just, and that's more for me is what getting this message lately out there of like, it's like, are you sure this is what you want to do with your life? Like, where is, where is it going for you? Where's your, where's your long term plan? Mm. Because fame's one thing, but your ego will kill you. And that's the, what the, God bless her, Barbara Windsor, we lost her last week. And mm. Barbara taught me how to lose my ego because I used to say to Barbara, like, Barbara, how do you do it, man? I couldn't get Tim, you couldn't go anywhere with Barbara, like getting from here to reception. Like she was on your, down the road. I remember you, I watched Supogo, you said she was on your case with things. She, she was like a different generation. Yeah, she was yeah, on to she me. Like, to like, yeah, she's a great woman and, yeah. and so so very massively humble, you know, like because she'd had hard times. Like when she was the age I am now, like she went for a 10 years, like I do, like of not working, and then she got his standards and it saved her again. Because all of a sudden you can't play a little blonde with big boobies anymore when you're like between 35 and 50. Then you've got to be someone's mum. Mm. And someone's learnt, which is the stages I'm going into now. So, and I've enjoyed my ten years sitting back, really. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've enjoyed that because obviously it's enabled me to get well and, and to rebuild relationships, rebuild mm. stepping stones, one brick at a time. You know. And I said to her, "Boy, how'd you do it? Like, you couldn't get ten paces down the road without a black tap. So you'd be, be right, Babs. She'd go, hello, darling. Turn one, and 
I said, wow, you're so humble with everyone, you've got time. And she was interested in people. Mm. Like if we're in Tesco's and the guy's serving us, he had a name badge on, so it was you. And she would go like, cheers for that, Ben, thank you. Have a lovely oh. day, darling, because she'd read his name and she'd make someone feel. And that one thing is like, you're taking interest in somebody else. That's the show's character. No, I mean, it just shows a sense yeah. of character and a sense of, of caring about other people. Mm. And I said, how do you do it, Babs? And she said, I don't read anything about myself. I'm not your generation. I don't Google myself, I don't read about myself, I just get on and do my job. Mm. And it's nice to be nice, it costs nothing. It's nice to be nice. And that's what she taught me, because we'd go out and we'd do everything. And like, if you were going for dinner with Bath, and you had a table book for nine o'clock, we'd probably have to get there about half seven, because by the time everyone said <laughs> hello to her, we'd be able to sit down for nine. Do you know what I mean? If we got there at nine, we wouldn't sit down until half ten, because everyone, and she would have time for everybody. British history. She was absolutely British history. Yeah, she, she goes was, back to like, the crazy. She's like, do you know what I mean? When you think of the East End, you think of the crazy, you think of Barbara Windsor. She's yeah. the original, like, she was Queen of the Big Carry-ons and everything. Queen of the Big and Queen of the East End, do you know what I mean? And, was, and she, a, was she in Wurzel Gummidge? She was in Wurzel Gummidge, yeah, 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 she was. She was In the skates. No, she was the little one on the front of the ship. There was Aunt Sally, and then she Aunt was on the front of the ship, the little yeah. cute one that was on the front of the ship. But yeah, she did worse with She'd done loads of stuff, man. And um, I just, I was so in awe of her, and yeah, she just, just to watch her work, how she works, her and June Brown, who plays Dot. Just watching people, I love to watch other people work, and they're, not just the way they work as an actor, but how their characteristics are, and how, learn, how they, they keep them real. I learned so much from Barbara, and a, a lot from June Brown. I, and I learned a lot from like Stephen Fadham and that as well, who plays my brother Phil. Both the boys. Mm. Um, there's some great actors I work with on EastEnders. So Jake Woods, a fantastic mm. actor, and, like, and Adam Woodjack. Some great people on there. And, and also, I've got to work with some great directors and stuff. And I think the greatest thing about them all is they're personal. It's not just they're the most giving people. So you can get an actor that might be a very good actor, but a very selfish actor. Mm. So they don't share the scene, they steal every, every shot. Yeah. Even, even if they share it, like that bit of light that's on your face there, they'll move so they block that, that bit of light. Yeah, People, yeah, it yeah, gets yeah. to that yeah, level, yeah. let me tell you. But I'm lucky, everyone I work with is very a given actor, and that's always them sort of those little things that are mm. passing on little nuggets of information and watching, and and it's what keeps you going, and it's what keeps mm. the industry the way it is. And that's what the, going back to the reality stuff is like. Where's the art? Mm. You know, where's the craft behind it? Where's the art? I'm not, I'm not slagging them off because it's like everyone's making a pound out. That's great. What my worry is is with the mental health side of it later on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What are you famous for? I watched as well. Come on, be like you. Sam Mitchell, the very, very first, your first appearance. Oh, was me it Ricky Sid. Was long yeah, hair me and Sid. I was like 16 years old. I look exactly like my daughter yeah, does now. It's like, it's mad. Oh, I'm a movie, innit? He's seen you like sort of there, he sits down, comes up. And yeah, it was, old, it was old. I wouldn't watch it, but they Sam would have fame now, like, you know, everyone, you know, so many people, you've got these YouTubers well, you now think calling back out then? fighters like Conor McGregor. Like, it's crazy, it's crazy how people get but, famous like that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like, something mad different, but you was like famous, like you said, like, like you said in James English, it's just like, there was all three, four, four channels. Four channels. Channel four had just launched for 90 seasons. And I'm that fucking old people, people know, right? right? I'm that old, 47, yeah. that the channel four had just launched. We didn't even have Sky, we didn't have a mobile phone. How old did you do? Uh, 16 when I went to East Ends. Yeah, Sid was 17 because he was driving. But on a level, so what was it like? Because that's like... That's how we had no internet, we had no, there was no YouTube, nothing like that. You, we had like, we used to have 25 fame? million people watch us three I mean, times saying, a week. Now we're lucky like, to get three, three million but what, uh, was, an episode. The fame, like, do you know what I mean? Because it wasn't it just that, I mean, at that it time as well, I was with Brian Harvey as well. I, I, when I got to 18, I got with Brian and, you know, like East 17 and Take That Revivals, like the Bootles and the Stones were back in the day. There's always them two bands. You've got the Christmas I mean? song as well, East 17. Yeah, comes Stay Another Day, yeah. yeah. I don't, every time that, when I hear, hear that, when I hear Brian Owen, Michael Bublé, I know it's Christmas. <laughs> but no, um, yes, yeah, so I was with Brian, so that was like a crazy thing, like the press were used to follow everything we did. And, and do you know what, at the time, it was just, we were just living a normal life, what we thought was a normal life. And it's Become like, the norm. Yeah, and like we just lived in a little house, a little flat together and that, and it was fun. And you know, he was the love of my life. He, he's probably the only man I've ever loved. Brian Harvey. Brian Harvey would be the, probably the only man I ever loved, but like loved, I actually did love. And um, but we were just too young, do you know what I mean? And it was mm. it was just the fame and everything else. And he just couldn't deal with my addiction. Yeah. Brian hates cocaine. He hates drug like that. It, it's, it's a weed smoker like my son, but he's, he hated cocaine. He hated it. People used to go, oh, it's only because of Brian Harvey. It was nothing to do with Brian Harvey. Why took drugs? 
Yeah. I was taking it longer before I met Brian. Brian hated that shit. Yeah. It's easy to do that. People do that though, innit? It just sort of criticise. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's easy. Like, like, like people used to say, oh, oh, Whitney Houston only cruised a Bobby Brown. Well, That's what no, I was thinking. Like, I mean, really, it's that yeah, 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 On a much about, bigger but scale, but it's like, do you know what I mean? And like Brian was a massive talent, and he still is a massive talent today. Mm. Within his, and my son's worked with Brian, even with like Brian's produced stuff with Kai and done stuff, and like, and that makes my heart happy. You know what I mean? It's like they're, yeah. they're so alike, like crazy. But I've like, seen what's going on with Brian. You know, like it's sad. Do you know what I mean? It's like, not it's, sad. It's um, it's real. What Brian's doing is real. Like that stuff about the red room and all that stuff about um. Them parties and paedophiles were in paedophile rings. Yeah, it happened. It's real. Yeah, I was part of that. Yeah. I was no, no, groomed no, no, and abused. I'm saying, I was saying that's not, I'm not but saying that's sad. I mean, him, sad that not he's, that he's le- I mean, the sad bit I'm saying is like, what's sad is no one's listening to him. And he's not, and like people mocking and all that. Like, yeah, people are going to mock him because they don't want to, they don't want to hear the truth. As much as this COVID thing has made people look at conspiracy theories. And what Brian's talking about isn't a conspiracy theory, it's real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then paedophile rings do happen. Yeah, then paedophile rings did happen on a massive scale. Yeah. That's how I got my fame, was through being groomed and abused. Um, and it, what, luckily for Brian, he wasn't abused, but Brian found out a lot about it and he's, and he's rallied and he's done as much as he can to stop it. And people are trying to shut him down for it and people think he's crazy and everything else. But he has had his house bugs and he has had a lot of things gone on and, and he's fighting a good fight for, for something that he wasn't even... Thank God he wasn't abused, but he's fighting for all of us that was. And, I can believe, yeah. and he's got a voice for it. And he's, and do you know what Brian is? He might be a little man, but he's got some big bollocks on him. Yeah, and he's got a big mouth. To, and so he has got a big you? mouth, and he's been behind the door for things that he shouldn't have been mm-hmm. because he was innocent. He's done a lot of things, and, and I will rally, I'll back Brian Harvey to the day I die. Mm. I always would, because I know what he's doing is real. And all that stuff with the Red Room and the secret passage doorway and the things that were going on in there, yeah, we did see it. And I will say it on tape because I know when the James English thing come out and I think he thought it might have been a live, a live broadcast I was watching, which I should never have done, was watch the comments. I shouldn't have watched it when it went out. Because I don't hate it. I hate seeing people's nasty comments because I've got a big mouth. And when people and out of, that's one thing I can't let go of and I'm learning to reduce. is like all the people talking to me on there while it was playing out, saying nice things, I'm commenting to them and then certain people are saying things and I'm like, listen, see you, shut your mouth. Mm. And I shouldn't do that. I know I shouldn't, but I get so in, in, I don't know, I get incensed with it because I just think you don't, you haven't walked a day in my shoes, you haven't seen people, you haven't seen your friends kill themselves because mm. they were abused by abusers. People I went to school with aren't here anymore because mm. of what happened to them. Um, and like a lot of people out there that have been sexually abused by a family member, a teacher or whatever, some people do take their own lives when it, the, the, the fault's mm. not theirs. And, um, inside, I've seen suicides I know uh, I yeah you know it's like that. it doesn't make you a weak person it's just no. some things haunt you so deeply it's that you can't speak you're so scarred of them. It's, okay. it's like do you know what my best mate Danny Starling he says to me he calls me trying to tell he says because you're that broken and shattered he said sometimes I think even with the best will in the world no one could put you back together but you've done the best job you can and he's proud of me for it but it's yeah. like with Brian it's like what he's doing is right it is right but he's sort of lost his He's almost lost his freedom to, to fight somebody else's battle and no one was listening to and everything he's speaking about is the truth. And all those people that he calls out on there have to hold themselves accountable because they know what they've done. One day Brian Arby won't be here and it, and it won't be through any fault of his own. And that's what upsets me the most because all he's doing is trying to fight a fight to put people behind bars that are never going to get there. No, shout out to Brian. Shout out to Brian. Harvey. Yeah, man, he's good, he's good stuff, man. Brian is good stuff. And do you know what? The best of it is he is a talent and he's little for, he's, he was an amazing singer. He still is an amazing singer, producer and stuff. And I've just got so much time in the world for him. And he does, he's like me. He goes off on a, that's probably why we got on so well. He goes off on a rampage, ranting and shit. But he's like, yeah, for a little person, man, he's got a lot of going. He's got no, a lot of big that. mouth and no, that. He's that. good, he's powerful. I can relate to that. I can I'm sure. To me. I'm, I can relate to that. And I, also, the, you know, the same thing with Brian. I know it's like being by yourself and fighting lonely battle. Like I was in mental hospital, high school, mental hospital. I said, I want to do all these things. And people like, you know, the screws and all that, the staff and that there was like, you know, you're fucking mad. But I knew in my head, I knew what I was fighting for was right. I knew I had a vision. I know. Yeah, thing. but then and the did, thing is, he, well, it's different. Did you him. question yourself at any point? I have to ask you this question because it really plays me. Did you at one point question yourself and think, shit, am I crazy? Oh, all the time. Did you? All the time. Did, you, did they get in your head? And you I, think so, I, I did something to think, actually. 
I'm boom, and I'm in Ashworth. This is like a high school. This is, like, this is the end of the line, really. Like, yeah, it is, and that's the words I use it. When I went to Bournemouth, that's the word I use. This is end of the end of the line. And I did start thinking sometimes when I wrote this, these goals, these dreams, that I, and I wrote in the key to living law of attraction was the book. And I start writing these things. I actually start thinking like, am I fucking mad? Is this what I'm mad? Because like when they say like when you're mad, you don't know if you're mad. Do you know what? Like some of the most highly intelligent people are are what they call crazy, like mm-hmm. mad. Like Einstein and that they say was like a complete crazy, but yeah. it wasn't. He was just hyper intelligent. Yeah. You know, and that's another thing with the law mm-hmm. of attraction. I think when you're putting stuff out there, like I'm manifesting stuff and uh, and doing stuff in meditation, I meditate every day, and I manifest a lot. But I never manifest for myself. I manifest for other things mm. in abundance. And I think with that, it brings you good gratitude and abundance. It brings good things to you. And I try and manifest for other people. Like I've a list of people. It's a bit like praying for someone. It's like it's like almost like if you pray, if you've got a religion, whether it be God or, or whoever, Allah or whoever your whatever your belief is, whatever you believe is out there, it's bigger than mm. us, right? For me, it's like the law of attraction, the universe, Same. whatever. That's me. I, that's how I just put it out. So some people are like Christians. Um, I did that for a little while. I did the Christian thing for a little while. And I do believe in God, but I believe there's loads of other people. I think there's loads of things out there, loads mm. of different things out there. So it's like having a prayer list. So I've got a friend of mine at the minute that's poorly, has got a, a, a problem with her liver and stuff. Another friend of mine has just got a bleed on the brain. I'm getting to that age where my friends and we are all starting to fall apart a bit. So, and then they're on my list and every night when I manifest things, I manifest good health for them. And it's the same as having a prayer list, but it's mm. like, it's just, you've got to, you, you can't keep the way I've got, what I've got from this 12 step program is, I can't keep my sobriety if I don't give it away. You know what I mean? Like if mm. something I want that badly, right? I can't hold on to it if I don't share it, right? So if I don't reach out to somebody and I don't, or with a twelve-step program, a bit like Russell Brand. I don't know if you watch any of his podcasts. No, I haven't seen that. Well, Russell's is great. He's no offense, no Russell. Well, just, um, you haven't got around. I've only been out four months. Yeah, I'm you haven't around to him yet. You haven't around to him yet. Yeah, uh, but you're like his his theories mm. and stuff, and he's he's twelve-step based, and he's you know he's got me through. Watching him has got, not him personally, but he has got me through he's watching him and, and reading his books and listening to his podcast got me through a lot of, uh, a lot of my recovery. You related? And yeah, of course. Relate, because he's, relate, yeah. That's why I'm going to do it. That's why I'm going to yeah, do it. And, I, and um, so for me, it. it's like, he looks at every different thing from like yoga, spiritual people, breathing techniques, it's all different types of things. But everything always comes back to what he bases his recovery on. It's his 12-step program. Same as in me, it's a 12-step program. Do I do a lot of meetings? No, I don't, because I do a lot more of law of attraction meetings and a lot more mm. of stuff like that online because that's actually what works for me. Mm. That's what I find what works for me. And I think it's just about, you know what? You haven't got to do what everyone says you've got to do. You've got to do what works for you and what keeps you well. Mm. A bit like what you're doing. Four months out, you're doing what's working for you. Yeah, it's scary territory sometimes. Mm. Yeah, you do have to check yourself. The day it's not working for you is the day you're not scared. Mm. When you get too like comfortable, that. when you I get too comfortable, I was, comfortable, out, I was you know. registering that in my head, and I like that. I like when you that, get a little yeah. bit nervous and stuff, like I said to you yeah. today before we started this, so probably the first podcast. Yeah, this is the done. first one, Christmas special. Yeah, I know, I mean, yeah, it's the first one. And it's I said to you, you're a little bit nervous about it. You're like, no, because we know each other. Yeah, we yeah. met, we talked, and we talked a lot before this, which is good because we've built up a a rapport, so we're not going to walk in and just be like, sitting down and You're doing right. that. Yeah, yeah, sitting there doing the piers. How was these standards for you? Yeah, like doing boring interviews <laughs> like that. And at 13, you did this, and da 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 And you got no, 16 CSEs. No, I don't understand. I wrote nothing. Like, this I is know, great. I wrote nothing, and I just thought, you know, it's, it's just a like, chat. The law of attraction is amazing, and like, I'm not trying to base my, you know, because I'm true crime and all that sort of shit. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I want to, I want people to be able to watch this and, be, and relate and connect to, you know, if they take something away that's why that might change people's lives, that's what I'm trying to do. Do you know what I like yeah. about the angle you've come from as well is it's not just sat down like a police interview. <laughs> it's what I call podcasts sometimes, a bit police interview. Like, it's like, here we are, yeah. go, tell your story. Yeah. It's like, here's your statement, go for it. Here's your appropriate adult. And it's like, with you, it's, when we spoke about it, you're like, do you know what, I just want to spend a bit of time with you and like, we've got, we've got it's me and my camera guys, yeah. like me and Tyler are just going to come down, we're going to film a little bit of what you do during the day, and obviously you know me, I like a spa, you just happen to find me on a day that I'm booked in having a spa. In a manor. In a manor house, yeah, having a in spa a retreat, yeah. It's, it's, I live in the countryside, like this is where the local spa is for me, it's so it's like, this is my little bit of, um, my little bit of something for myself, and you can't keep it, like I said, you can't keep it if you don't give it away, and it's like, 
I still, I'm, I'm 47, I've been in this industry since I was seven years old, so 40 years in, in and famous from 16, so whatever that is, 30, whatever. So I feel like I'm not watching you, like, I'm just ending now. So like, like yeah, so uh, crazy, isn't it? So like, <laughs> I still get nervous doing things, like, and I was getting ready to do this tonight, I'm like, okay, whatever you want to give to me, you're going to give to me to speak about, it's going to fill my mouth. Yeah. Whatever what I'm meant to talk about is just going to happen. Yeah. And um, I still get a little bit of nerves, and I think the day I don't get nerves is the day it's done for me. Yeah. Because it's the oh, day I'm getting to give it up. Me. I think that's yeah. going to stick with me. Though. Do you know what it is? Because so, I've been getting filmed for Amazon Prime, I've been going and meeting all these people, like, you know, Liam Garvin, who's, who's filming me for the Amazon Prime film. And after my fight is over, obviously the boxing will still be going, you know, depending on how well I do. But this know. is your career fight. But that, that's not something like, I think going and meeting all these amazing people that, it's, it's so interesting to meet and people like, you know, people that I've unsigned look, looked up to, like, but people that are in the public eye, people that I've seen, people like, you know, Class of Fame and series, like, me and Kay Cole is very special to me, Joe Egan meeting his of all these things. Be able to meet all these people and connect to them later, and then a lot of people saying, actually, like, Ben, like, what you're doing is really good. It's like, it's, it's like really I interesting to, to me. hear it, the comp- but you, know but you need to take that on board. Yeah, so yeah. What I told you earlier is, like, yeah, you struggle to hear it because you feel like a little bit like cringy, like, oh. Why are you saying that about yeah. me when I've done all this shit? I'm a, I'm a horrible person, I've done nasty yeah. things. Take it on board and it's... I'll get choked when I'm trying to tell you how to say it, but it's like... Own it, just to own it. Because that's where you're meant to be right now. Thank own you. it, because do you know what you've done as well? And I'm like, you've self-educated yourself. You've sat behind there and you've gone through some... I can't imagine what your story, but it's like... And I'm, I'm sure we only know a, a third of what you've been through. And, and in two years from now, when you've interviewed all different sorts of people, we'll have learned a lot more about yeah. what your journey has been because other people will bring different parts of you back mm. to light, and, that, and that's therapy for you. But I get a little bit choked up about it because I just think it's a bit special what you're doing because I think you're not just looking at crime. No. Just because you've done prison, you're not just going to interview people for crime or boxers or da 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 The East End Daddy Diet, it's been done. It's boring. Mm. Every second kid in every city and every village and every town thinks they're in a Daddy Diet film. It's from here to Marbella, it's done. It's boring. And the, and the you're, thing is, like, you're do you know what? I'll, in everyone. I'll, I'll come at Daniel, and I, you know, whatever editor side where you want, you want to be honest, I will say I know, yeah. I will not glamorise the bullshit. Like, a lot of these people, that they, they, you know, these gangsters, a lot of them have done things, yeah, granted that. But half the things they're all saying is, like, they're just selling, they're just selling bullshit. But they're it's trying boring. To, they're trying, they're, they're, exactly, it's boring. Exactly, and you know what, it's shameful. Do, it's and, it's and, shameful. And, 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 it's all bullshit anyway, what they're, what they're saying. Like, I could talk war we'll, stories. We've all got our own money. Yeah, exactly. Right, and you could do that, but actually what you're I doing is, you've educated that. yourself yeah. in prison, which I think is a very key learning point right there. Do you know how easy it is for people to go to prison? It's really easy. Yeah, there's your product of it there without being rude yeah. right there, there it is if people are never going to happen to me well I'm sure you never thought you was going to be one of the people that was never going to get a release date I thought I was never coming home they told me only you and Bronson only you and Bronson right they told me I'm the only guy since, since Charlie Bronson to be kicked out of Walmart they told me I was never coming home I'm a mercy to the doctor. But that was your home. home. That was it. Of course. Prison was your home. There was no release day. I don't even know. I, and then I had you no took that on board. You took that on board and you started educating yourself mm. with different things and then you wrote your book and you done things and people tried to call you crazy and call you mad. Yeah. And you hung on to who you was. And mm. you've had you've had a battle through a life in care and, and, and the care system and one thing and another and you know and you've had to You've had to hold on to a little bit of truth of who you are. When you mm. just a kid, you don't really know who you are. No, no. Certain things happen in your life, trauma, and you're certain parts you stick at that age. It takes a lot of therapy and, and, and work to get through them, as you well know. Mm. But you've actually got, you've sat back there and uh, you could have gone one way or the other and you've gone the right way and you've educated yourself. And I do truly believe that you're going to go on and uh, you're going to interview all sorts of people, from sports people, like not just crime people and all that. Like, you're not just going to be like one of them people that just because you've been in prison are going to do crime people mm. or stuff like that. I think you're going to interview all sorts of different types of people. Yeah, and I like saying to you, I will only stick to the theme. Like, you know, I'm not going to be like everyone knows I've had a bit of a pop at Atwood. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm not. But that's gonna, you I'm as not a person. Fake. That's what I'm saying. And I'm going to keep it real. Do you know what I mean? I might. Have, <laughs> Potential people that keep might start following me. Keep it real, like Ian Peel. That's it. Let's be real. The title is "Let's Be Real," and I'm because not. I'm not going to be a fake with. Do you get what I'm And that's saying? what's going to keep and, you out of and prison. And, and, and exactly. And I. But my, my my main goal, my main focus is, and by me, everyone is that I know people will connect. I know someone will take something from this. I know, you know what I mean, to try and inspire. Listen, there's to try always going to be a keyboard warrior out there. Of course. You know, there's always going to be yeah. that one bully. But I don't. I'm there, but there's so many people that. Uh, 
I'm very grateful. I have a lot of gratitude because I have a lot of people that say to me, nice one for that, nice one for that. And I have a lot of good comments. I don't handle my social media, my daughter does. Yeah. And um, I get a little bit choked up when I look at things because I think, why can't I just be a bigger person? I've, I've, I've come through mm. so many things. Why can't I just stop calling people out? Like you do, right? But that's who we are. Yeah. But I need to take that, I need to rough... I need to smooth that edge off because yeah. that just is where I drop off when I have no class. It's the emotions. When it comes yeah, to that, that, that was always my, my, that was my enemy. My, when I was inside before, you know, I went through my change, like, my emotions got me sort of triggers and that. It's the shit that we've been through. Triggers, that, you know? there's the word. It's, it's, it's the shit that we've been through now. When you hear these things and all that, like, it triggers it. And there's emotions. It's not like, it may be not be that that we're angry at. It's all like that What that word's connected it's to. What it connects to what, it, what it brings you back to, exactly. you know. And that's one thing. It's like, it's lots of things that can trigger things for people. And it's like, and anybody out there that's watching this can relate in one way or another they can relate and I know they can and if they can it's like don't ever think you're alone because you're not no, 100% talking is the greatest thing and I think with this pandemic everybody's had to start talking again yeah. which is a great thing and in a way these podcasts that everyone's popping up doing are good they're really good because yeah. a lot of people are connected again it's not just about people worrying about saving up all year and going to my bar and going to pool parties and having a great life on Instagram. It's actually listening to each other's problems and talking about mental health, talking about your fears, your worries, mm. you know, sharing your goals, your dreams. And people are connecting and working on a level together again. And that's that's a really good thing. And hopefully it'll make things a lot simpler. I love you, man. That's the main thing. Like, I wouldn't be able to done all this without the support that I get from, you know, my loved ones and the people that I've met through doing this and that. They're you wouldn't be able me. to do it if you didn't have drive. No, exactly. Do you so know you know have, what to, mean? You have to credit yourself for that. Do you know what I mean? The people that are supporting, actually, when I come out and actually start doing things and people thinking, actually, like, this guy is not crazy, like, and actually people start jumping and actually believing that. And, yeah, like, but don't the be messages, careful. Of, yeah, but you're always going to see, and you'll be clever enough to see that who's jumping on because you're high riding at the Oh, cool, yeah, yeah, Because cool. you've seen it all, yeah, cool. I'm sure. And, and we know that. And you just smile and wave, because then people drop yes, off. Yeah, and, yeah. Like a dog with fleas, when it shakes itself, the fleas fall off. These people will fall away yeah. as well. And the real ones will be riding it out. So you're proving that to yourself. The only person that can prove it is you. Mm. And the only person you've got to prove it to is you. Because yeah. if people love you, they love you anyway. Your cousin, the barber, your friends, the people that love you, they love you anyway, for good, bad or indifferent. Mm. But you've got to love you. And I think you're doing that and you're, you're healing yourself, you've educated yeah. yourself. And I'm doing that for me as well. And it's like, I would never have been able to say that a couple of years ago. I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have been able to say that. That's good. You didn't say it, man, wasn't it? How's it feel saying that? I you see, I just see you, I see you smile. I just see you look to me, you smile when you say that. How do you feel saying that? I'm proud of it. Good. I'm proud of it. Like, I'm proud to say that I'm like, I'm proud to be living back at my parents for a little while. To have that time with them is just, it's so special to me. Yeah. My daughter's there, my son. I'm so excited for Christmas next weekend. Like, I'm so excited just to be... When was the last time you was, like, excited for this, this type of Christmas? When my kids were small and they used to, like, and I used to put the freaking... We used to have big fireplaces like this, and I used to have like all the get me boots and make me at my husband's mate's husband's boots and put the the flower around them like that like from the door all the way through to the fireplace, like all like say it looked like footprints in snow. Yeah. It's shaking off his boots, and that was the last time. Now my kids are twenty four and nineteen, and do you know what? I'm excited just to conversate with them at dinner, at Christmas, and laugh and wear stupid hat and like paper hat, and we're all in our, our COVID bubble. We're all in the same bubble, so we're all together all the time anyway. But just to, just to sit with them and watch a bit of Only Falls and Horses with a couple of mince pies and like a Classic, cheese board and yeah. just look and see my family, my dog, my kids, sit there fed, well, love. Just take it all just in. Just love. Just love and take so it in. In abundance, yeah. love in abundance. And it costs nothing. And I could have had that the whole time. But I'm not going to look back at that. I'm going to look forward at going forward. And, and it, like I said before, family first, it's on my tattoo. And that Kai made me get it. Me and Kai both got it, me and my son. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of it. So, yeah. I can see the smile. It's a smile. I am proud of it. Do you know it's like my first, uh, first Christmas out of 13 years? Is it really? 13 years. Hey, like what's Santa bringing well. you? At least you're not on the naughty list this year, right? <laughs> he brought me my freedom. I mean, yeah, he did. Uh, well, you brought your freedom. freedom as well. I, I brought you freedom. I don't know. Liam <laughs> McGowan was in the film movie. He was going to my first, like, get me a stocking. Oh, so I'll get a tangerine, I'll probably get a tangerine. Yeah, and a lump of coal, you'll be good to go. <laughs> you'll just be happy to wake up. Do you know exactly. what? I'm sure you wake up every morning and think, wow. I do, but I still do. I can do walk outside the front door today and it must be the amazing it thing. It is, you know, it's still taking time. I've not spoke with Dave Courtney in there, like, he saw him as a Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave, like, 
he, he knew that I was still adjusting, it takes time. Is that, you of know, course, I said that to Tate, you. Said it, yeah. And it does sort of take time, and I still get the lows. I knew that today, with you, even like yeah. you're getting trains and doing stuff, and I could see you're like, oh, your head's yeah. absolutely twisted with it. You're like, oh, my head's fell off, I've got to go here, yeah. and it must be, but you're like, you're doing it. It's yeah. like. Winging it. <laughs> no, you're living, trying, you're living, I'm trying, you're, living. Like, yeah, it's, you're it's, actually living in the moment and in the day and you've got to embrace that. It's you a have. new world, I like, well, you know, when I come out, it was whatever you want it to be. all this sort of stuff, so it's like, it is difficult, like, saying, doing this in people, and I know, like, obviously, COVID, the world that I remember to, well, now is totally yeah, of different, of do you get what I'm saying, but, you know, I, I, like I said, I've got, you know, like, I had to fight through the system, like, you know, when you were going through your recovery, you, we have, it's only us that can only fight for ourselves, isn't it? So. Well, yeah, but you have to jump for a lot of hopes, and, you know, you have to mm. tick the right box, and you have to jump for the right hopes, same with me with work and stuff, and there's a lot of reasons, there's a lot of things, I could be working more than what I am, and there's a lot of things I say, no, I don't want to do that. Because mm. you know what, it's not right for me, it's not right for my recovery right now. Mm. My kids and my, my recovery comes first, and then my children. Mm. Without them, without my recovery, I might sort of stick a gun to their head and blow yeah. blow them away because they, they haven't got a mum so you know don't get me wrong I still have a drink I like a drink that's fine but it's like I, I've never put myself in I won't say I never because I could never say never but like just for today I'm okay and that's that's, the that's what it is every day I get up and I think yeah today's good today's a good day I could get up every day and be depressed could we all mm. but there's always something to be to be to find the beauty of the day for would you do, do you search for it? Is it coming naturally now when you wake up? I wake up, I meditate come? straight away. The I do a 10 minute meditation. I meditate before I go to bed at night, always. Um, do you know what? And that's what I said. I have a meditation and I put, um, I manifest things for other people, for friends of mine that are poorly, for different things that I've needed, for this pandemic, for things that I see. I might see something on telly about someone whose child's missing or something. And I'll, I'll just say, like, I hope their family find peace or I hope. Just different things. And it's just it's selfless mm. to be selfless try and be selfless a bit more because I've been very selfish so you're yeah, trying to be yeah, selfless we've done it. but I do wish you the best of luck because no one deserves yeah. it more than you and that's something we'll be able to do without the support obviously that people are watching for but again you you know taking the time you didn't have to do this Daniel but you know what I mean you heard what I had to say and if you're doing Likewise. this honestly man it means a lot well yeah. we're not doing it for us we're doing it for other people to yeah. hopefully I mean there's always going to be people on there commenting underneath this oh she's a drug addict look at the state of her face and yeah. you know what absolutely I want to yeah, run your opinion done yeah, but there's a lot of people done. on there that yeah then there's, there's people that will take from it and it doesn't you know if you want to write it doesn't matter shit, they're still matter. watching it aren't they yeah, exactly you know, I mean you still watch it but the main thing is it's like you know I'm out here trying to you know fight any knife crime and try and show the younger generation if you have a goal if you have a children you, you know if you've got a goal if you've got a vision then go chase it by you sitting here supporting that why was, uh, you should, why was you should, because no, don't let you. anyone ever no, tell you, you know what, I'm still working, what, I mean? I'm, uh, what a blessing, I still go to work, and all the things I've fucked up, and all the things I've mm. done, doesn't mean to say you can't still reach your goals, and I've still got to work, You're I'm blessed. Look, look, how, look, we come back from it, we, look, we, we are, we, we, we all are, the do you know what, and anybody that's out there, we all make mistakes, there's not one person that has ever walked this earth, that is perfect, no matter how perfect their life may look, there is not one person that walks this earth that is perfect, we all make mistakes, but when you owe your shit, as you well did because you've done enough time behind the door so yeah, you didn't pass anyone up. So no. when you open shit, it's healing. You've just got to learn from your mistakes and just get on with it. But I do wish you all the rest of luck. No, thank you then. Thank you. Come in. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I think the thing that's the sort of really I've really taken away from today is is that emotions. It doesn't matter like what sort of situations, like emotions, emotions and People can all go through the different wars and it's about how you come out the other end. I think Danielle, what she's doing now is amazing. She's shining, you know, looking forward to Christmas and being taking gratitude for the, for the little things in life. And I think that sometimes we get so wrapped up in the things that we don't have, we forget to appreciate what we do have, you know. I saw her face light up when she said about the Christmas. You'll see it on the camera too, you know, about just sitting with her family at Christmas time. What a wonderful thing. And it's fortunate as well, because not everyone does. Like myself, for many, many years, I haven't had a Christmas for many, many years, but this Christmas, you know, I'm blessed to be spending time with my loved ones, you know. So, you know, thank you for everybody for watching. You know, a lot more people, we're gonna carry this on and stay tuned. On with Let's Be Real with me, Ben Hatchett, and more people are going to be coming. And hopefully, people can take away inspiration from other people's journeys. Have a lovely Christmas. Take care. I love you all.